Science You at Home is generously supported by grants from the Pennsylvania Department of Education and the EQT Foundation. We love science, yes we do! this? We're all stuck inside and they want to do science, just like on Science U. What's Science U, you ask? Science U is a science camp for kids held summers at Penn State University. They get to do all kinds of fun science activities and experiments, like this one. with milk and then we're gonna put four drops of food coloring in the middle of the milk then we're gonna take a cotton swab and we're gonna introduce soap into the milk and see what happens wait all the food coloring is running away from the soap but what about the churning the more fat the more churning you can use different types of milk that have different amounts of fat what? I'm doing 2% milk. I'm doing full milk. What do you think will happen? Try it. Yeah. See that? Milk, food coloring, dish soap. We can do that right now. Yay! Uh-huh. I can hear you saying, but I don't know anything about science. What do I do? Ha! I said the same thing. But you know what? Science U has a great website with lots of ideas and activities, and we're going to show you some right now. Because you don't need to know science to do science with kids. Wee! I've got a very curious kiddo. Oh. Waking up way too early and asking question after question. How much does Earth weigh? Will we ever discover aliens? How do flies walk on the ceiling? Hey, Mom, how do flies walk on the ceiling? Oh, I don't know, hon. It's upside down. But this could be a learning opportunity. Why don't you observe more closely, try to figure it out while I go get some coffee? OK. How do they do it? You must know the answer. Your mother doesn't know everything. But what do you think? I think they have sticky feet. Well, let's do some research. Yeah. With some patience, and a little coffee, my kids' curiosity can be a springboard for learning. Hey, Mom, they really do have sticky feet. <laughs> That's wild. See? I learned that you can learn right alongside your kids. And observing insects wow. is a great place to start. Today, campers are watching bumblebees. Now, if you look really closely at them, you can see the pollen baskets on their legs. That's all the pollen they've collected as they've been foraging. And now, here are some bee watching safety tips. If you're going to observe bees, it's always important to let an adult know beforehand. Bee stings hurt. Will I get stung? Most bees will not harm you if you're observing them from a distance. Sit and watch the bees while you're quiet and still. Shh. Bees aren't too interested in people. They're usually busy going about their own business, collecting nectar for their colony. The bee may come to check you out, especially if you're wearing bright colors. It might think you're a flower, but it's not likely they'll sting unless provoked. So just observe with your eyes and ears. There's a tiny one. When you're observing bumblebees, you can see lots of different types of activity, collecting pollen, flying, sitting on the flowers, even grooming themselves. Try making a chart and recording the different types of activity that you see. If it wasn't for bees, we wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't even have those beautiful flowers. Some insects start out as caterpillars, 
and campers are going to find out how they find their food. This is a caterpillar. It's a Manduka caterpillar. It's spongy. This caterpillar is about four inches long, and it's got deep V marks on its sides. If you notice the horn on its bottom, and then mandibles for munching. Use those mandibles for munching. Nom, 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 nom. These are very hungry, hungry caterpillars. They love to eat. A caterpillar can eat 64 square inches a day. <clears throat> and all that food gives them enough energy to turn into an adult hawk moth. They're huge. So what kind of food do they eat? Manduka caterpillars like solanaceous plants like potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers, just like us. Given the choice, the Manduka caterpillar will choose the solanaceous leaves every time. But how do they find the food? I think they smell with their tiny antenna on their head. I think they use their sight with their little eyes right there. So do they find their food by seeing it or smelling it? So let's test it. We'll take a solanaceous leaf and seal it in a plastic container so they can see it but not smell it. And then we'll take some green mesh so we can camouflage the leaves so they can't see it but they can smell it. Let's see which one they can find. On your mark, set, go! That one. I think it's the smell. They go straight through the mesh even though they can't see the leaves. Yep, every time. We can tell that Monduka caterpillars find their food by sense of smell. Their nose is so good, they smell better than your dog at home. But do all caterpillars find their food this way? Maybe you can catch a wild caterpillar in your neighborhood and test it out. Okay, here we go. A couple items added to the shopping list and we're ready for our next experiment. Cornstarch, food coloring. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? You'll see. You're making it ooh black. You can punch it. It's gooey. You can walk on it. It's gonna blow your mind. It's a solid. It's a liquid. It's a solid! No, it's a liquid! But can it be both? What's in this stuff? You've got two parts cornstarch. Mixed with one part water. And you get a mixture. A high density suspension that we like to call oobleck. Solid particles suspended in a liquid. But how can something behave like a liquid and a solid? Oobleck is what scientists call a colloid. And this stuff changes when it comes under pressure. When the mixture is sitting still, Water surrounds the cornstarch granules and lubricates their movement, and it hand. flows like a liquid. Oh. But under pressure, like a punch, water is squeezed out from between the granules, and the friction suddenly increases dramatically, and it acts like a solid. Oobleck is weird because it changes its state of matter through pressure. So dance, dance, dance on the oobleck. Skip on the oobleck. Take a stroll on the oobleck. Just don't stop. Help, I'm stuck. Hey there, Mike from Science U here, and I just want to warn you from experience to be careful making a giant tub of oobleck. Because once those hordes of kids are done with it, we have to safely dispose of it. And let me tell you, if you try to wash cornstarch and water, this non-Newtonian fluid down your drain, you're going to need a plumber. So let the mixture settle, pour off the water, scoop it into a zip-top storage bag, and throw it away in the garbage. You will thank me. And now, it's time to cook up some delicious snacks. Can you make a s'more using only the power of the sun? The sun sends energy to the earth as solar radiation, and we can harness that energy to make a s'more. Today, each camper will be making their own solar oven using the materials you see here. A pizza box, aluminum foil, sheets of clear plastic, and black paper. Campers, aim your ovens at the sun. The sunlight hits the aluminum foil, which redirects it through the plastic window, allowing both direct and reflected sunlight into the box, where it converts the light energy into heat energy. 
hot enough to melt marshmallow and chocolate. Oh, that should be yummy. We love more, yes we do. We love more, yes we do. We love more than science, you. We love more than science, you. What's going on, Shimei? Hi, Papa. I'm trying to make my own solar oven out of a pizza box, like they do on Science U. Well, it looks very impressive. But it's not working. It's not melting the chocolate in my s'mores. I can't do this. I give up. Now, now. Let's take a look at that. What you got going on here? Well, they say you needed plastic wrap, black paper, aluminum foil, and a pizza box. So this is what I did. So why do you think these items might work together to melt that chocolate? Well, the aluminum foil reflects the sun, like a mirror. <laughs> that makes sense. What else? And then the black absorbs the light, just like a hot tar road on a summer day. Well, that's surely true. What else might heat things up? Did you ever notice how hot a car gets in the sun when all the windows are closed? Yeah, I've got plastic on all my sides. Hold on. There's a hole here. It's not sealed up. Hand me the tape, could you? We're going to try this again. There you go. You know, the greatest discoveries were made through repeated failures. Really? Really. A mistake is just an opportunity to learn something new. I sure am glad you didn't give up. Here you go, Pop-Pop. It's so gooey. That's when they're most delicious. <laughs> Bubbles, bubbles everywhere. But are all bubbles round? Bubbles just want to be round. You see, water is H2O. Two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The hydrogen atoms stick to the oxygen atoms of their neighbors, an attractive force called surface tension, which pulls water molecules into the tightest possible groupings, making bubbles round. But can you make a square bubble? We can trick the natural forces that make bubbles round using this box-like frame. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to blow a bubble right on top of it here. It's a square! When the round bubble is dropped into the middle of the frame, the soap film walls push against it and force it into a cube shape. Be gentle, okay? There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Experiment! Okay, can we talk? The next activity caused a little controversy in our house. Why is that? Because some people in this house don't always use a glass. Are you talking about Daddy? Ugh. What? What's the matter? You drank out of the milk carton and then put it back. When you drink from the carton, you put spit in the milk. Really? We can prove backwash happens by putting powdered drink mix in our mouths to color the saliva. The color swirling around in there proves a little of your spit goes back in your drink. That's my backwash. And what's so wrong with that? Germs. Bacteria. Let's test it. To test for backwash bacteria, half the campers drank milk straight from the carton and half the campers, the control group, used a cup. And everybody left milk in the bottom of the carton to test for bacteria. The campers then put the samples in an incubator for four days to grow whatever got into the milk. So here's the bacteria when we used uh, a glass. I don't see any bacteria. That's what's in your backwash. Look at all that bacteria. Most of the bacteria in your saliva are either helpful or harmless. But if you're sick and you drink straight from the carton, you can spread those germs to somebody else. So use a glass! Hi, I'm Shemaine, and I'm getting on my soapbox to tell all you caregivers, moms, dads, nanas, and pop pops, to inspire and encourage boys and girls equally all kids want to know how things work. And lots of us have that spark that will one day drive us to become scientists and doctors and engineers and, well, just awfully capable people. That's it. That's all I have to say. 
and I relinquish the rest of my time. Jemaine, out. Can you get power from a lemon? Lemons are powerfully sour. <sighs> and powerfully acidic. Acid is something that you find in a battery as part of a chemical reaction to produce electricity. So this lemon can be a battery? Campers can turn a lemon into a battery, but you gotta add a couple things. So if we take a piece of zinc, such as a galvanized nail, and we take a piece of copper, like an everyday penny, and we stick them into a lemon, we create positive and negative ends to our lemon battery. And then if we take copper wire and attach those to our penny and our nail, we're able to show that we create a voltage, and that voltage will give us electricity. It's generating electricity. But is it enough to light up a tiny light bulb? Not really, but if we hook up a bunch of them in series. Cool, but how does it work? What's going on between the penny, the lemon, and the nail? In a lemon battery, the zinc from the nail breaks into a positive ion and two free electrons. The zinc ion goes into solution with the lemon juice. The free electrons build up on the nail, but they're negatively charged and they want to go somewhere. So when a conductor, like a wire, is added between the zinc and the copper, all those electrons rush across the wire. The electrons are flowing. Flowing electrons is electricity. To complete the cycle, the electrons then go back into the lemon juice acid solution, form up with two H plus ions, and create hydrogen gas. It's an oxidation reduction reaction, a redox reaction. That's how most batteries work. These two chemical reactions push electrons through the wires, producing power that we can harness. I will hook up a million lemons and make the sourest, most powerful battery. <laughs> hey out there, I'm Shemaine's Papa, and I'm getting on my soapbox. Well, that's not going to hold me. So I'm going to stand next to my soapbox to say that grandparents can inspire kids too. Everyone who cares for a child can do science. And let me tell you something. You don't need fancy equipment to do science at home with your kids. Hi, Dad. I thought we were doing science stuff today. I am doing science. You're filling a jar with water. Uh-huh. Why? Well, I want you to look through this round, clear vessel and move your hand around on the other side. Okay, Dad. Whoa. <laughs> what do you see? My hand got bigger. But does your hand get bigger or does it just look bigger? What do you think? Hmm. It just looks bigger because my hand's the same size. See? Are you sure it didn't grow and then shrink right away? Ugh, Dad. <laughs> okay. Now you see this. A magnifying glass. Hmm. Now try this. Pinch the magnifying glass and run your fingers across it. Is it flat? No, it's curved. Kind of like... The jar! That's pretty cool, Dad. Today, Science U campers use their brains. Well, that's a given because Science U campers use their brains every day, but especially today. Campers know that their brain controls their body through the central nervous system. But how fast does the brain send messages to the body? We're going to measure Science U campers' reaction time with the ruler test. The ruler test? The ruler test. You stand over the test subject with the ruler and put the end of the ruler right between his open fingers. Then, without telling him when you're going to do it, you drop the ruler. And I have to catch it. We measured the distance on the ruler by recording where he grabbed it. The further it fell, the slower the reaction. 18. The ruler is falling at 9.8 meters per second squared. We can do the math and chart the reaction time. I was fast. I was faster. No, you weren't. Let's examine how the brain and the body work together. Our eyes see the ruler's been dropped. The ruler's been dropped. Dropped. Signals race through sensory neurons to the brain. Message received. Grab the brain then fires off the message through motor neurons down the arm to tell the hand to catch the ruler. Mission completed! Your reaction time depends on your eyesight and the speed that the signals travel to your brain and from your brain to your muscles. 
So what do you want to test next? Right hand versus left hand. I want to try it on my dad. How fast is your reaction time? How to think and act like a scientist. First, begin with a problem or a question. Whoops. Aw, when you knock a piece of bread off the counter, why does it always land jelly side down? Make a hypothesis. I think it has to do with the height of the table, which affects the number of rotations the bread makes before it hits the floor. Design and conduct an experiment. I will push a piece of jelly bread onto the floor from knee height, counter height, and top of the fridge height. Analyze your data. <sighs> huh. Make a conclusion. Hmm. If it's wrong, try again or make a new hypothesis. If right, yay! Double check or test a new hypothesis. Does a pizza land topping side down? And of course, communicate your findings. See? Oh, very impressive, but uh son, we're okay with messes in the name of science. But it's time to clean the lab. Okay, sure, Dad. And I'll ask first next time. <laughs> um, next time? <laughs>Hi, Mike here again. Just back to say that you can find this poster that charts out the scientific method at scienceu.org. Print out a copy for the fridge or for your room, and you can design your own experiments and think like a scientist. When NASA sent the Mars Exploration Rover to Mars, they faced a huge challenge. How could they safely land the vehicle without breaking it? So what do you think we can do to safely land on the surface of Mars? We challenged the campers to design and build their own Mars landers. But instead of landing a rover, they had to land an egg without breaking it. So the challenge has been thrown down. Good luck, I'll be coming around to check. So if you had to drop a raw egg, how would you protect it? Armed with bubble wrap, foam, balloons, and newspaper, they got to work. We are designing an egg protection system. Top and bottom? Yeah. We're making parachutes. But would they work? Would the landers dissipate enough energy from a fall to protect the egg? It was time for the moment of truth. Some designs worked, yes. and some, not so much. This is why cars have airbags. <laughs> then we showed the campers how NASA did it. First, a parachute opened to slow down the lander. And then, as it approached the surface, such a cool design. We had to make one just like it. The campers got a pattern from NASA for a pyramid-shaped egg lander capsule printed on construction paper. They cut it out, folded along the lines, attached four balloons through poked holes, and taped them down. Put a raw egg in the paper capsule and taped it closed. Our Mars egg landers were ready for launch. We took our landers back to the parking garage, this time to the very top. You see, research is important, because when I land on Mars, I want to stay in one piece. Okay, parents, grandparents, and caregivers who really care, that's our show. Now go do science with your kids. Observe the world around you. Feed their curiosity. You never know what fire that spark will ignite, because someday it may take a girl out of this world.
Science U at Home is generously supported by grants from the Pennsylvania Department of Education and the EQT Foundation.